Happy Sunday. Today is May 9th, 2021. I cannot believe we're already into the second Sunday of May. Uh, as a quick reminder, each Sunday we gather together to Zoom at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're able to Zoom with us, awesome. And if you can't, I'm just happy that you're watching this video together. I'm so excited for this lesson today. It's going to be very, very fun. Now, before we get started, let me ask you our question of the day. And our question of the day today is, if you could have any job in the whole world, what job would you have? It's kind of fun to daydream about, right? All right, everyone. Now it is time to change our green screen. Ready? Huh, this is an interesting background. I bet we will see why we have this as our background as we learn our story. All right, everybody, let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so, so much for the opportunity to learn your word together. Thank you that you love us so much that you came to earth to die on the cross for our sins and rise again so that we can be in your family forever and ever. Today, please help us to take time to understand that you want the world to know you. The Bible, your truth, is not just for a few of us. It's for all of us. So please teach us how to make disciples. We love you, Jesus. Please help us to love you more and more. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job, everyone! And Butter wanted to say hi after the prayer. Say hello, Butter. Okay, everyone, now it is time to review our scripture memory verse. This is our last time doing Hebrews 13, 8, and next week we'll be beginning a brand new memory verse. Okay, let's read it all together. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. We've talked about this verse. We've practiced this verse. This verse is a reminder that Jesus does not change. He loves us so much forever and ever, and he stays the same, which is good news for us. So let's review our motions. We have five motions. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13.8. I bet you guys feel like you've done this a lot and you feel really good at it. So let's speed it up a little. On your marks, get set, go. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. One more time, a little faster. Ready, set, go. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13.8. That was very, very, very fast. Good job, everybody. Okay. Now it is time to jump into our lesson. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew 28. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament and chapter 28 means the big 28. This is the very end of the book of Matthew, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. Once you get to chapter 28, we're gonna start in verse 16. So the big 28 and the little 16. Let's take a quick second to remember our last few weeks. Over the last several weeks, we have been reviewing how Jesus has appeared to his disciples after he rose from the dead. After Jesus paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross and he rose again, he didn't just go on and do whatever he wanted to do. He spent time with his friends because he had a lot of important stuff to teach them. And today's lesson is so exciting. So if I look at Matthew 28, 16, it says, Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. So the disciples, the 11, remember there had been 12, but Judas was no longer a part of the group because he betrayed Jesus. The other 11 disciples went to a mountain that Jesus had told them to go to. Easy peasy, right? They followed directions. Let's see what happens next. Verse 17 says, And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. So there are probably lots of people around the mountain, the 11 disciples, some other folk, right? And the 11 disciples saw Jesus on the mountain 
and they worshiped him. They said, you are God. We love you. We praise you. Thank you. But some of the other people doubted. The people who maybe didn't understand what Jesus had done, they thought, what are these people doing? Why are they worshiping and praising this man? Let's see what Jesus says, though. Let's see what happens next. Verse 18 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, so authority is a very big word. Perhaps you've heard it used in our world like, if a person has authority, like they're a figure, like an authority figure, like a teacher or a principal or a police officer, they're a person who has a lot of power and a lot of, I don't know, like control, right? Like if your principal walks in the classroom, you pay attention. Does that make sense? And so Jesus spoke and he said that all authority in heaven and earth had been given to him, to Jesus. And so that is a lot more authority than like a teacher or a principal or a police officer. All authority has been given to Jesus. That means he is in charge of everything. Not just New York City, not just Queens, not just New Jersey or Pennsylvania, Everything in the whole world and in heaven, Jesus is in control of, and he has authority over. And that should really make us feel good because it means no matter where we go, no matter where we live, no matter which person we meet, Jesus is in control. He is in charge. So maybe you're like eight years old right now, you can know and you can trust that when you're 47 and you're living in Hawaii, Jesus is in control. And no matter how old you get or who you meet or where you go, Jesus has authority. Does that make sense? That means if someone's in charge, we want to obey them. We want to follow them. And Jesus, we know from the Bible, is God. And his authority is perfect. He never messes up. Sometimes your principal probably messes up. Jesus never messes up. So it's very good that all authority in heaven and on earth belongs to Jesus. Next, Jesus gives his disciples a very important job. And I want us to talk about it. So let's read the next verse together. Let's read, yeah, the next verse. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Okay, so I went a little bit into verse 20, just the first half. So Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, I've just told you, I have all authority. I'm in charge of everything. I'm in control of everything. Everything is under Jesus' power. So therefore, he wanted the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. Disciple is a special word for a follower or a friend of Jesus. And some of you have probably heard that before. But Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, you guys, you go and you make more disciples. He wanted the group of people that loved and followed Jesus to grow. Because why? We know why. Because we know that Jesus is God. We know that he paid the price for our sin so that we can be in his family. And how you are in God's family is by understanding Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. So Jesus wanted the disciples to go all over the whole world and tell people about Jesus and the Bible. Yeah, Jesus wanted everyone to know that he is the Savior. 
because Jesus wants to save everybody. The gift of salvation, the gift of knowing that Jesus died on the cross for you, is not just for us. It's not just for Redeemer Church. It's not just for New York City. It is a gift for the whole entire world. Jesus' salvation is the same yesterday and today and forever, right? It's the same for all people throughout all of time, no matter where they live or who they are. And so Jesus has the authority to tell his disciples to go and make disciples, to make more followers of Jesus. And then the second part of that said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So baptism, a lot of you probably know what it is, is very special. Sometimes at church you might see the pastor sprinkle water on a baby's head, or you might see a person get dunked into water. Baptism is the special symbol that shows people that you love Jesus. So like I have been baptized. When I was 10 years old, I got dunked in the water, right? And that was my way of showing everybody I love Jesus. Jesus is my savior. And so when Jesus told his disciples to go and make more disciples, tell people about Jesus, Jesus reminded them, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus wanted the people to show that they had a changed life. And baptism is a symbol that you know that with your sin, you are dead in your sin, but because of Jesus dying on the cross and rising again, you know that you have everlasting life with God. And so that's why baptism is important. That was a very quick overview. But Jesus mentions baptizing because once the disciples go and tell people about Jesus, the next thing to do is be baptized so that people can see that symbol that you have made that change in your life, that the Holy Spirit, that God has shown you, right? We can't save ourselves, only Jesus can save us. And so he is the one who helps our heart. The next part that we had read, the very beginning of verse 20, after it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, it says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So that's just Jesus telling his disciples, you're going to go tell people about the great love of God and the salvation of God. They will get baptized to show that they love Jesus and then make sure to teach them to observe all that Jesus has commanded. Teach them to follow the Bible. That's the last part. So we go and make disciples, go tell people about Jesus, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, because that shows that we know Jesus is our savior. And the third part is you teach them to obey the Bible. Yeah, those are the three things Jesus told his disciples to do. We're going to pause before we read the end because there's one more part and it's so wonderful and I love it. But I want us to think back to our question of the day. Our question of the day was, what is your dream job? What do you want to be when you grow up more than anything? Maybe you want to be a scientist or an astronaut or a painter or a poet. Or maybe you want to be a mom. Or maybe you want to, I don't know, take care of animals. Each person... God created differently with different dreams in their heart, right? And so this is called, what Jesus just told his disciples, is called the Great Commission. Commission is a big fancy word for job or mission, right? When Jesus told his disciples to go and tell people about Jesus, Jesus wants us to, to do that too. And for some people, that will be their full-time job, the thing they do from, you know, early in the morning to late at night. 
they will be saying, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Hey, let me tell you about the gospel. Hey, let me tell you about the love of God. But Jesus wants every person to do that however they can. Not everybody's going to be a pastor like Pastor David or Pastor Drew. Not everybody's going to teach Sunday school. But every person, no matter if they're in kindergarten or fourth grade or high school or college or has a job, no matter who you are, you can spread the good news of the Bible. Because Jesus loving us enough to die on the cross for our sins is a very good news. So as you grow up, as you go through elementary school and middle school and high school, and then if you go to college, or if you don't go to college, if you go straight to work, if you get a job, if you become a mom or a dad or a husband or a wife, no matter what you do, you can tell people about Jesus. And you might say, wait, Miss Julia, if I'm an astronaut in outer space, how do I tell people about Jesus? Well, chances are good that you'll be on the spaceship with other astronauts and maybe you'll bring your Bible and you'll read your Bible up in outer space in your space shuttle. And another astronaut might say, hey, what are you reading? And you'd say, oh, I'm reading the Bible. And they might say, the Bible? Why do you read that? And then you, astronaut Joe, or astronaut Kara, or astronaut Charlotte, could say, I read the Bible because I love Jesus. Would you like to hear about Jesus? And then you can talk to your other astronaut friends about loving Jesus. The same goes for every single job. Maybe you are going to work in a factory that makes vacuum cleaners. Maybe that is going to be your job day in and day out. And maybe you can't really bring your Bible because there's no really time to read because you've got to make the vacuums. But if you're joyful and you're happy and you're kind, some of your fellow vacuum cleaner manufacturers might say, Hey, hey, David, hey, Laura. Why are you so happy all the time? We're making vacuums. It's a loud business and you're always smiling. And you might say, oh, I feel very joyful inside because I love Jesus a lot. And your fellow vacuum cleaner manufacturer might say, why does loving Jesus make you smile? And then you can tell them all about how Jesus has changed your life. So I hope those two silly examples of astronauts and vacuum cleaner um, manufacturers kind of make you think that no matter where you go in life, no matter what school you're at, no matter who your friends are, no matter what your job is, you can always talk about the good news of the gospel. Jesus said that all authority belonged to him that he is in charge of everything. Jesus is at the very top. He is in charge of everything. And so no matter where we go in life, we can tell others about him. There's one more really special thing Jesus said that I wanna make sure I tell you before our time is up. After Jesus was done saying all of these things, he said something very special at the end of verse 20. He said, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's just a big fancy way of Jesus saying that he will never leave us. He will always love us. He will always be with us. And the Holy Spirit will help us talk about Jesus. You might meet people in your life who don't really want to hear the gospel, but God will help you know what to say and how to say it. Maybe up on your space shuttle, your fellow astronauts don't want to hear about Jesus. God will help you. God will help you just keep reading the Bible, keep being kind, keep being a good astronaut. And when God's timing is right, remember, Jesus has all authority. He's in charge of everything. When the time is right, 
Jesus will help you talk to your coworkers and your friends and your family about the love of Jesus. He's always with us. His timing is perfect. He knows when it's right to do anything. And he loved us so much that he died for every single person on the planet. Right now, there are like 8 billion people on this planet. Guess how many people know about Jesus? Not all of them. Jesus wants every single person to know about him. And it's up to us to tell people the good news about Jesus. And that's like the greatest job ever. Yeah, if Jesus loves us so much that he brought us into his family, then we gotta tell people about it, you guys. Because it's so good that we are that loved, that we are saved from our sin, that, that the, the Bible will change us, the Bible will teach us how to live because of God, right? God teaches us, God shows us, and we have his word. So when Jesus told his disciples to go and make more disciples of all nations, it was because he loves the whole world and he wants the whole world to know about it. It's not a secret. It's for everybody. All right, you guys, great job today. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you because you are good and you are kind and you are holy. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for showing us who you are, who Jesus is, and how we are rescued. We are safe because of you. And so Jesus, we ask that you would help us to understand we only read four Bible verses today, but they are very important because they're telling us to tell the world about you. And so no matter what our job is as we grow up, please help us to share the gospel, to tell people about your great love because your love is better than life. We thank you that you have all authority and we thank you that you are in charge. Please continue to help us trust you and obey you so that your will will be done. We love you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen. You guys, great job. I can't believe we spent that long on four little verses. It just goes to show the Bible, there is always more to learn. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.